The ancient civilization that once thrived in the location, now known as Jordan's Lost City of Petra, is often regarded as one of the world's most mysterious. The Nabataean inhabitants of ancient Petra were able to provide their city with opulent constructions and infrastructures as a result of the prosperous and fruitful commerce they conducted in trading spices and silks with China, India, Rome, and Egypt. This allowed them to give their city a more opulent appearance. Since its rediscovery in 1812 by the Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt, the city of Petra, which had been thought to be lost, has served as the inspiration for several myths and fictitious tales. The fascinating thing about Petra's architecture is that they were not built, but rather carved out of the enormous sandstone gorges that encircle the lost city. This fact alone makes Petra a sight to see. Having said that, let's take you back in time and discover for ourselves the engineering miracles and treasures that made Petra one of the new seven wonders of the world. The treasury, also known as al Khazna in Arabic, is a spectacular building that was carved out of the rock face of a sandstone cliff in Petra and is tucked away in one of the city's valleys. At the turn of the first century AD, it was carved for the first time under the reign of Aretas Philopatris, a Nabachean king. There are a few traditions that are said to explain where the treasury got its start. One of these legends is that it was utilized as a treasury by Egyptian pharaohs during the time of Moses. The entrance to al Khazneh is watched over by sculptures of the twins Castor and Pollux, and the whole rock face is covered with carvings of various legendary animals and motifs influenced by Greek art. In contrast to the opulent appearance of the buildings outside, the treasury's interior is unadorned and simple, with no elaborate decorations or carvings to be seen elsewhere. The massive entry archway leads to three distinct rooms. The sheer dimensions of the treasury, which are 80 feet broad and 127 feet tall, transform it into a massive sandstone artwork. Simple iron chisels and hammers were used in the process of carving out al Khazna, which began at the top and worked its way down. Even though many of the carved elements have already vanished as a result of the structure's old age, the treasury is still regarded to be one of the most gorgeous structures from the ancient world and is easily capable of competing with the grandeur of Egypt, Greece, and Rome. This is due to the fact that the structure's age has allowed many of the carved features to fade over time. Another structure that seems to have been carved out of the sandstone mountains is known as the Monastery, and it bears the name of that structure. It has a width of 50 meters and a height of 45 meters, and its design is evocative of the standard Nabatean classical style. On the inside of this structure, there is a single room that may be reached through two sets of steps. This chamber leads to a cultic niche. Historians are of the view that the monastery was most likely initially constructed as a temple in the 1st century BC and was dedicated to the Nabakin king Obodas at the time of its construction. The ancient city of Petra, which is now considered to be destroyed, is believed to have been home to a multitude of tombs that served as the last resting place for members of royal families, much like the ancient Egyptian civilization. The royal tombs may be broken down into its component parts, which are referred to as the Palace Tomb, the Corinthian Tomb, the Silk Tomb, and the Urn Tomb, respectively. All of which were dug out of the sandstone canyons that are found inside the city itself. There is a theory that the urn burial was built for the Nabataean King Malchus, who died in the year 78. This theory is based on the fact that Malchus passed away. There are others who believe that it was built with the express purpose of housing Aretas' tomb. Petra's amphitheater was hewn out of the solid rock of the surrounding mountains, and at its fullest capacity, it can accommodate as many as 8,500 people. The building of the amphitheater was finally finished in the 1st century AD, and it had aspects of architecture that were common throughout the Hellenistic period. Around the year 300 AD, the city was attacked by a series of flash floods and an earthquake, both of which caused a significant portion of the theater's features to decay and become unrecognizable. The Great Temple is the most spectacular piece of building in the long-lost city. It is positioned in the middle of the city, and its towering columns and intricate network of subterranean canals make it the most stunning piece of architecture there. 
The perimeter of the temple, which is often considered to be Petra's largest freestanding edifice, spans 35 meters in width and about 42.5 meters in length all the way around. This splendid temple remained to serve the local people all the way up to the start of the Byzantine period in the 5th century CE. The actual engineering talent of the Nabataeans can be seen in their smart design of Petra's hydrological system, which may be considered as the cherry on top for all of the structures that were carved out above it. This system may be seen as the frosting on the cake for all of the buildings that were carved out above it. The Nabataeans were well aware that the process of sculpting all of Petra's construction required a large supply of water in addition to other amenities, and they prepared accordingly. Petra was an oasis for the Nabataeans. In order to transport water from a source known as a Musa, also known as the Spring of Moses, all the way to the urban center of ancient Petra, they created a complete network of ceramic pipeline segments. This network is comprised of several individual segments. Hydraulic engineers of the contemporary day have discovered that the Nabataeans were able to effectively transmit water five kilometers from its source to Petra by carving out pipe ridges along the mountains with a four-degree slope. This was accomplished by the Nabataeans. The Nabataeans were successful in achieving their goal. Long-distance water lines were meticulously planned out and erected so that the thriving villages that surrounded the vanished city would always have access to an uninterrupted supply of water. Because of its location between the gorges of two canyons, the treasury required the Nabachans to design a means to control sudden water surges and flash floods. Both of these natural occurrences had the potential to do irreparable damage to the carved edifice. They did this by constructing a series of dams made of stone blocks that were mortared together and attached to groves that had been carved out of the canyon. This allowed them to control the flow of water through the canyon. Because of the manner in which these dams are built, they are in a position to withstand the tremendous amount of pressure that is brought on by the vast quantities of water that are stored behind them. Petra's ancient urban hydrology network is made up of a total of eight springs that provide drinkable water, 36 dams that protect the city from unexpected floods, over 125 miles of piping that manifolds all of the city's water systems, and over 100 reservoirs and cisterns that store water supplies. In addition, the city is surrounded by over 125 miles of pipe that manifolds all of the city's water systems. In addition to that, there is a pipeline system that spans over 125 miles and carries water. This complicated hydrological system was able to provide a single person with 8 liters of water per day, which was an excessive quantity for the time period in which it was constructed. It is thought that the whole infrastructure of Petra, including the buildings that were cut out of the rock, was erected at the same time using a comprehensive master plan. Petra is often referred to as the Rose City because of the reddish hue of the sandstone that composes the city, and the peak of the afternoon is the ideal time to explore the mysterious buildings that have been carved out of the rock. When exposed to the intense heat and glare of the desert sun, the construction's hues and details take on a more vivid appearance. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through the treasury of ancient Petra. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of our ancient world.